Everyone to stand except for the family. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He made me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restored my soul. Leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Ye go a walk through the valley, the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, but thou art with me. Thou art with me. Thou art with me. Take comfort. table for me in the presence of my enemies. I notice my head with oil. My cup running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The earth is the Lord's, 
and the fullness thereof. The world, and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas, established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing of the Lord, righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him. And seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lift up their lasting glory. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even with the hope of everlasting gold, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory.
Bible viewing to those who have not had opportunity when they come at this time to view.
scriptures, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, at verse 50, it says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we all shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, my beloved brethren and sisters and family, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that your labor is not in vain yes. in the Lord. Amen. She fought a good fight. Yes. She has finished her business. Yes. Goodbye.
thank you, Lord. Henceforth, yea, says the Spirit, 
that they may not, they may rest from their labor, and their works do follow them. Lovingly submitted, Pastor William T. Keyes, along with the officers and members of Pines Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. At this time, we have um, Samuel Henry come forth.
bless the Lord at all times. This praise shall continually be in my mind. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Celebrate the life of Felicia Collins David. Reverend Keys, Dr. Ibrahim Bynum, Reverend Scott, Minister Carr, and all ministers of the gospel are in the congregation. To the Collins and Davis family, these are the acknowledged men. A lot of the courts we have men, but the family will read them in the privacy of thy home. May God who sees your breathing heart and hears each tender prayer be ever near to give you peace and keep you in his care. This is the senior usher boy with care and sympathy in your life. He takes care of his people like a shepherd. He gathers them like lambs in his arms and carries them close to him, Isaiah 40 and 11. Praying for you. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever, Psalm 73 and 26. May God give you strength when yours is gone. May his grace and mercy carry you on. May the unending love that he has for you revive your heart and see you through. Southwest Edgecombe, class of 1987, forever in our hearts. Because we care, a message of comfort for you. This is from Pamela Phyllis Jack, Jackie. Jayla, the Bora family. With sympathy to you and your family, what more beautiful gift, what brighter light could your loved one have given the world than the caring that is so clearly written in the hearts of your whole family? So sorry for your loss. If you need anything, I'm here. Tanya Cooks and family. Remembering that beautiful song, God gives every person their own unique song. It's one that will play their entire life long. Through the love that they give and the gifts that they share, through the memories they make and the dreams that they bear, what a beautiful way to celebrate them. Through the song they live, the song you'll carry forever in your heart, in sympathy and prayer, Keeping your, you and your family in prayer, Brother Joe Womack, 2022. May you find comfort in lasting memories. We are very sorry for our loss, friends, and the youth department. With sincere sympathy, there are times along life's journey that can test the spirit deeply. Though this is certainly one of those times, may you never stop believing that your faith, your inner strength, and the power of God's love will carry you through. In deepest sympathy, Church Cleo Atkinson, Jr. and staff, Edgecombe County Church Department. The, those we love are never really lost to us, for their special love lives on. Jada and Ruth, SPA. Forever remembered, forever loved. With deepest sympathy and love, William and Rose Arrington. With sympathy. We're thinking of you as you remember the love, as you mourn the loss, as you celebrate the life. Pastor Mac E. Battle, leading lady Deborah J. Battle, and the East End Baptist Church. This part 
Vice Prime Minister of New York, Dr. Edwards, Mrs. 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 from John and Chris and Mike, from um, Miss Manny, F. Moss, and Raymond Moss. St. Paul Baptist Church, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, Reverend Dennis M. Jones, Pastor. Resolution in loving memory of Mrs. Felicia Collins Davis. No matter what your trials are or how big your mountain seems, the Lord is there to see you through. He'll go to all extremes. So if you call, if your cross seems hard to bear and you know not what to do, the one who loves you most of all will be there to see you through. The officers and members of St. Paul Baptist Church in Rocky Mount, North Carolina, extend our deepest sympathy to our First Lady, Melissa Jones, and Pastor Dennis M. Jones, and the entire family of Mrs. Felicia Collins Davis. Whereas we, the members of St. Paul Baptist Church, extend our love, love, support, and heartfelt condolences to the family of Mrs. Felicia Collins Davis, who has closed her eyes to rest eternally from a life of labor and service to her family and unto the Lord. Whereas we are praying for the family and for Pastor Dennis and First Lady Melissa Jones, that God will give you peace which surpasses all understanding in the days ahead. To the family, we encourage you to console yourselves in the hope of a great reunion promised to us through the master of all life, that you shall see Sister Felicia again, for the Lord shall descend from the heavens with a shout, with the voice of the archangels, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. First Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18. Therefore, be it resolved, the St. Paul Baptist Church family will be fervently praying for and with you during this time of healing. May God continue to bless and keep you, wrap his healing arms around each of you, and strengthen your faith and trust in Peter, in him. Our sincere condolences, the St. Paul Baptist Church family, Wim Arrington, Chair Deacon Boyd, Katrina Joyner, Church Clerk. A letter from heaven. When tomorrow starts without me, and I'm not there to see, if the sun should rise and find your eyes, all filled with tears for me. I wish so much you wouldn't cry the way you did today. While thinking of the many things we didn't get to say, I know how much you love me, as much as I love you. And each time that you think of me, I know you'll miss too, miss me too. When tomorrow starts without me, don't think we are far apart, for every time you think of me, I'm right here in your heart, lovingly submitted from Joanne, Ann, and Lisa. Obituaries. Alicia Juanita Collins Davis was born on November 7, 1968, in Edgecombe County to the late Nathaniel and Lavinia Collins. She received her education in the Edgecombe County Public School System and was a 1987 graduate of Southwest Edgecombe High School. Felicia furthered her education at Federal State University in Federal, North Carolina. She was a longtime employee of West Alorica, Incorporated of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, until her health started.
started to decline and just recently earned her certificate as a certified notary public. Alicia joined Pines Chapel Baptist Church at an early age where she became a youth advisor. Alicia loved working with the youth and often spoke of the things that she desired for the youth of Pines Chapel. She loved her pastor and her church family. No matter how Felicia was feeling, she always tried to press her way to church on Sunday morning. Amen. Felicia was united in holy matrimony to Jeffrey Davis mm -hmm. on April 17, 1999. She was a devoted wife and loved her family dearly. She was known as the event planner for the family. She was always spearheading family gatherings, such as planning family vacations and holiday, holiday gatherings. Felicia would often call family meetings to let everyone know what the menu would be for family functions and what she wanted them to cook. <laughs> in addition to her parents, she was preceded in death by a brother, Willie Frank Rose. Felicia learned leads to cherish her precious memory, her husband, Jeffrey Davis of the home, two stepsons, Travaris Harper, Tiffany, and Rico Davis, both of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, three grandchildren, Taylor, Caitlin, and Jalila, three brothers, Reginald Collins, wife Anne, of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Tony Collins, wife Lisa, of Conway, South Carolina. And Fred Collins, wife Joanne, of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. One sister, Melissa Collins, Jones. Husband, Reverend Dennis Jones, of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Six nieces, Tawana, yeah, Tawanya Collins, of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Tiara Brown, husband Joey of Fort Washington, Maryland. Brianna Collins of Kannapolis, North Carolina. Shante Davis of Chicago, Illinois. Tiffany Lovett of Wisdom Salem, North Carolina. And Jessica Davis of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Four nephews, Tony Bird of Temple Hills, Maryland. Rashawn Sharp. Jazz Marie of Charlotte, North Carolina. Jason of Bill Potts, Bayboro, North Carolina. Terrell Bullock of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Nine aunts, Mrs. Stella McCullough, husband James of Brooklyn, North Carolina. Mrs. Emma Dorch, Mrs. Annie Jenkins, and Mrs. Nora Umstead, all of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Mrs. Phyllis Driscoll, wife, husband, Reggie of Waldorf, Maryland. Mrs. Alice Ida Dickens of Pine Top, North Carolina. Mrs. Annie D. Collins and Mrs. Maddie Ruth Collins, both of Michaelsville, North Carolina. And Mrs. Christine Collins of Wilson, North Carolina. Four uncles, Mr. James Edward Dickens, wife, Bernice of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Mr. William Dickens, Jr., wife, Jacqueline of La Plata, Maryland. Mr. Jimmy Dickens, wife, Jackie of Washington, D.C. And Mr. Leroy Johnson of Pine Tops, North Carolina. Her mother-in-law, Mrs. Vandell Davis of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. One sister-in-law, Minister Janelle Carr, husband Johnny of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Two brothers-in-law, Adam Davis and Douglas Davis' wife, Carol, both of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Two great nieces, four great nephews, and a host of cousins, other relatives, and friends. Acknowledgement. If I mispronounce anybody's name or whatever, please forgive me. The family would like to express our heartfelt gratitude for your condolences and sympathy during this difficult time. We all felt your thoughts 
and prayer spirit following the death of our beloved Alicia. Special thanks to the staff of East Rocky Mount Kidney Center, Edgecombe County EMS, Tar River Transit, and the staff of Well Care. Your kindness and generosity will always be remembered and greatly appreciated. May God richly bless each of you. Though comfort through touch during grief and mourning is what many of us desire, we want to protect the health of everyone gathered to celebrate the life of our loved one. Please adhere to the CDC guidelines by social distancing and refraining from hugs and handshakes. My thanks to you. And she said, well, can you speak on behalf of the family? I'm like, uh-uh. 
I do, you had advice, so I didn't have to do that. I'm not for sure if I can do it. Good. I do want to say that, um, like Lisa said, Felicia did really, really love her, her family. Um, and I think Robert Team was saying how she liked to put together um, the events and how to do the cookouts and all that. And she actually helped um, lead our family reunion. So I reached out to my cousins and I said, you know, Felicia's not here, so let I was going to step in. I'm not going to say no. Um, that, um, you know, I felt that as our cousins to represent her and we want to um, share our, show our love to um, the books of Fred, Bo, Tony, and Jeffrey. We want to give you a rose on behalf of the cousins to let you all know how much we love you all. And like we said, we are here for you. Um, we just all call away. Um, and we love you very much. And Jeffrey, like Lisa said, you are family. You ain't going nowhere. We're going to run you down like we always have. Um, and like I said, we just want to let you all know how much we love each and every one of you all. And we want to present a rose to Jeffrey.
and friends. I know a lot of y'all know me. I want to preach your classmates when they got me. What's my I got? I should be up there. But I just like lost the words. But I want to say this. I want to thank Felicia for the 40 years that she gave me as a friend. <coughs> From Little Hope down in Michaelsville to Carver School to South Edge Home and to Southwest Edge Home when we graduated. And even after when we graduated, we still remained the best of friends because it's like her family was my family. No matter what went on with my family, her family was there. And no matter what went on with her family, my family was there. But I want to say this, Felicia, you had a peace. You fought a good fight and you won. You didn't lose, but you won. Yo 
First, say thank you for being God. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. We applaud you for your transcendence. We applaud you for your remains. Grateful for being in your presence. Father, we ask you will continue to shine forth your face upon this family. You will continue to strengthen them when they are weak. Build them up the more when they are strong. Thank you for the grace that has sustained them thus far. Thank you for your mercy. Send the word, O oh God, that will break the bands of wickedness. The word that will cause you to be glorified. These are people that have died. Hide me behind your cross. That this week my nation can see all of you, none of me. The Bible is all said and done. You get all the credit. No flesh will glory in your presence. God, it is not my prayer to be entertaining, but it is my prayer to be necessary. Spirit of God, fall fresh on me. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, but a heart of understanding. For it is in Jesus' name. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15. The word of the Lord has already been confirmed. You heard it to our reading earlier. First Corinthians 15. We'll begin reading at verse 51, 51 to offer my condolences to this family. God is great. He is greatly to be praised. Before I preach, you allow me just a few moments to say something about Felicia. If I can. Um, Felicia is a jewel. Um, you know, there are those who you wonder if they love you. And then there are those that you know. And, and Felicia is one of those that I knew. Felicia, right on this side. Yes, Amen. 
Lord, we have been one man saying this little mother. Amen. We should have been a wheelchair. Those in the back would see it. Those in front of you, if you didn't look back, you wouldn't see it. She would give me so much strength while preaching. Because even in the wheelchair, there were times when she would stand up. And yeah. 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 Jeff, I'm going to miss it, man. I know that I'm praying with you, praying for you. God's got you. Allow Him to be your strength every time. A lot of people are going to tell you to be strong. You got to be strong. Be weak. His strength is going to be perfect in your weakness. Lean on him. Yes, yes, yes. Walk with him. Yes. Oh, yes. He'll walk with you. First one is 15. Verse 51. That was my reflection at the time and in the time and now. <laughs> Behold, I showed you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, when the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible. We shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on the immortality. So when this corruptible shall I put on the on incorruption, and this mortal shall I put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Somebody shall victory. Oh death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. What a preach. The time of this divided unto me with this thought. In our mind, the final victory. The final victory. In order to obtain victory, it denotes that you must have first been in a battle. No one can say that I am victorious without going through something to gain the victory. The truth of the matter is, sometimes it is the journey that makes the victory more sweet. Growing up playing sports, if we never encountered any adversity or through the season or through the game, then winning at the end didn't mean that much. In those games, in those seasons where we had to overcome adversity, that the sound of either the final buzzer or the last pitch was thrown across the plate, that we had the victory, it made it more sweet. So if we want to boast in victory, we have to understand that it's going to come with some tests and some trials. I believe I'm in front of some people today that can testify and say, I know what it's like to go through some tests and some trials. But at the end of the day, when I had the victory in my hand, it made every test, 
every trial worth it. Every tear that I shed on the journey has been worth it. Every sleepless night that I've had to endure have been worth it. Every heartache that has plagued my heart has been worth it. Why? Because I'm looking for my victory. You see, we as Christian believers, we have an advantage. We know how the end is going to be before the end has already happened. We can look at the end of the page, at the end of the book, and see that we already have the victory. You see, growing up, growing up, I heard a preacher say it like this. He told a story of his life as to why he would always watch Batman. You knew that Batman was going to be victorious. You knew that Batman was going to overcome the Joker. You knew that Batman was overcome the Penguin. You knew that Batman was going to overcome his adversaries. You knew that Batman was going to overcome and be victorious. And so why would you watch it Saturday after Saturday? Because you know he's going to be victorious. You know he's going to be victorious because they have another show coming on next week. You, you know he's going to be victorious. This preacher said the reason why I watch it Saturday after Saturday is not to see him get the victory, but it's to see how much trouble he can get out of before he gets the victory. I want to see how low he has to go before he obtains the victory. And, and just like Batman, so it is in our life. We know that we're going to have the victory on the other side, but there's some trouble that we got to face in this life. There's some tears that we have to share. There's some situations that we have to endure, but we can get through it because we know that there's victory. On the other side, I wish I had somebody here that could testify and agree with me and say, Jesus, I understand that there is going to be victory after this. And I believe that's why Felicia was able to, to endure her heartache, to endure her sickness, to endure everything that happened in her life. It's because she knew that sooner or later God would grant unto her the victory. Right. There's a victory. There's a victory that I know I'm getting ready to obtain. Well, what is this victory? There is a victory over sin. Somebody shout victory over sin. Yeah. Victory over sin. Understand death is as common as birth. Death is as impartial as the law of gravitation. Death is as uncertain as a thief in the night. We know that death is happening. We know that death has to occur. But what gets us is the uncertainty of death. What gets us is that death comes in like a thief in the night. Death comes in when we least expect it. The truth of the matter is none of us can really plan for death. I know the preacher told you you got to plan for death, but you have to store up your timber because you don't know the day nor the hour when death is knocking on your door. Uh, but to the Christian, understand, death is stingless. Somebody shout it's stingless. Death to the Christian is stingless because the sting of sin is buried in Christ at the cross. Let me say it again. Uh, the sting of death is the sting of sin. And that sting of sin was buried in Christ as he was crucified on the cross. I don't know about you, but that's good news. But you know that even though we have the past through what is one phase of death. Ultimately, the eternal state of death has been destroyed by Jesus at the cross. Uh, yes, I don't know about 
loves you and it does something to me to know that even though my body might be buried, I understand that the death of sin, the sin of sin was buried in Christ. I wish I had somebody that if you go please for burying the sin of death. You're taking the sin. That doesn't mean that we that remain won't shed some tears. Does that mean that we that remain won't have some sleepless nights? But to the Christian believer, death is not an ending. It is not a period to the drug sentence called life. But it is a semicolon to life eternal with God. Tell somebody, he took away the shame. Because the sin, the sin, the strip of sin was in death. But God has taken away the sin as he bore it on his body on Calvary. Not only is there victory over sin, but there is victory over mortality. For this corruptible was put on in corruption. And this mortal was put on in mortality. Somebody shout, that's victory over mortality. These bodies of ours are to share in the victory of our Savior's resurrection. That because Christ got up, sooner or later, the dead in Christ will raise in the eyes of but even though our bodies might be committed to the ground, there's another body that God has prepared for us. There's another body that cannot be stained with sin. There's another body that is not mortal. There's another body that takes on immortality. There's another body that will there's another body that will not be corruptible with disease, not be corruptible with sin, not be corruptible with worry, not be corruptible with stress, not be corruptible with heartache, not be corruptible with anything that this world could ever offer. But I'm grateful this afternoon that there's victory over mortality. Some people say you only live once. But the truth of the matter is you only die once. Because when we die and we die in Christ, we shall live again. I wish I had somebody that can be happy in this afternoon. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. 
much because there's victory over the place. She won't be there for a little while because sooner or later the Lord is going to cut the sky. He's going to sweep down that sweet chariot and there will be victory over the place. The queen has to give up the body of the saints. I wish I had somebody that's grateful this afternoon that knows that one day the queen is going to have her give up everybody that they swallow. The queen is going to have her give up everybody that they engulf. The queen is going to have to give up because Jesus has victory over the grave. You don't get it from Confucius. You don't get it from Buddha. But you get it from Jesus. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That means that all things are passed away and all things have become new. In him was a life. Oh, 
his presence looks like with my holy imagination I can see what his presence he is they tell me in his presence there's fullness of joy yeah, I'm on the machine when I get in his presence on the other side there's no
take this time to thank you, Pastor King, Jesus. Pastor Scott, Dr. Bynum, the choir, musicians, floor bearers, pall bearers, and to the many friends who have assembled here on today. The family says thank you. To the wonderful family. Songwriter said it best. Song of your last one. serve as the floor bearers. Thank you, boss. 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 I'm, I'm coming down. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the lane. Huh? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll be, I'll catch you in there. Yeah. I know those are good, so I just saw you playing the plane. Hey, how y'all doing? Hmm.
<laughs> my aunt, right? <laughs> and my cousin. Did you get a good side?